We're making great progress as we work our way through building this portfolio. So far, we've built out the hero section and the projects section, which is driven by the CMS. Let's take it a step further and build out specific project pages for each of these client projects. That way we can link it up so someone who presses view project has somewhere to go. When we created our collection, it automatically generated a collection page template. And if we go there, it's blank. And that's okay. Let's build this just as we build a normal page, only it'll be more impressive because we're not just creating one page, we're developing pages for all our client projects at once. So let's follow the same structure we've used before by dragging in a div block. Of course, this div block is going to be used as our container, our custom container element. And we'll drop another div block inside the container. This one will specifically serve as a project details div. And inside that, we can drag a text block. We can drag it right into the project details div, and we can get the text from project type. Now, we already have an existing class called project type, so let's select the class called project type, and we'll duplicate this element. By duplicating it, it's carrying the same class as the original, but what we can do in inner text settings is select from the drop down the completion date. Now we don't want these project types sitting next to each other, so let's change our display setting to block, and let's go back over to the home page to make sure that that's not negatively affecting the project types over there. And it looks just fine. Now, with our project detail selected, we can override alignment and align everything left. And we'll drop in another div block. This div block is going to serve an amazing role as project summary, which we can reflect in the class naming. Let's go back to the add panel again, and this time drag in a heading. This heading will be the H1, since this is the primary heading on the page, and we'll get the text from the name field. This is the name of the client project. We'll apply the same section title class we created for the home page, but in this case, we'll create a combo class. We learned, of course, that combo classes are frequently offered at Chad's ripped zone, but this combo class in here, we can use it to kill the padding on the left. All right, let's continue by going to add elements. Let's drag in a paragraph. This paragraph can be the description, so under inner text settings, we can get the text from the description field in our collection. Let's close out and apply the paragraph class. Fade down, fade up, container, create a combo class. Why are we doing this? Because we want to set everything horizontally. Now that it's horizontal, we have two items side by side, and we can adjust the width on the one to the right, the project summary div block. And by doing that, we're able to pull everything in the container to the left side. We're only affecting the container horizontal combo class. Let's grab our section title here and add some margin. And with our project details, we can add some padding on the top. And of course, we can go down to typography to adjust our alignment to push everything to the right. And now that that's happened, we can select our project summary and push off using left margin. Same thing on the project details, pushing off using left margin. Of course, that's pushing the other content to the right as well. Let's add another custom container. We're using a div block, and of course, we'll select our container class from the dropdown. And once we do that, let's drag in an image. We're going to use the image from the collection, from the client project's collection, which will pull in the image for that client project. Once that's done, we can simply create a class for it. Of course, full project image is descriptive, so we can go with that. And once that's done, we can set a radius, five pixels. Let's push off using top margin on this full project image. And for the bottom margin, we can click and type in manually the same 73 pixels, and we can hit enter. Let's continue building this page by adding the final major component, which is rich text. This rich text element can grab the text, it can get the text from the project details for that collection item. Once we've done that, we can close out. Now, notice how the paragraphs here and all paragraphs in the project by default look like this. We've created a paragraph class we've used before, but we can also use the all paragraphs tag. This way, the default appearance of fonts can be modified. So let's start by making some of those changes. And once we do, once we make each of those changes here, we're just tweaking the line height. All paragraphs by default are affected, even those that have a class, if they don't have something overriding that value. Let's close out and delete that paragraph, and we'll go up and select a different item from the dropdown. We'll select a different client project, and we can see, oh, wait a second, the page built itself. We didn't build this page. We didn't build each of these pages. We built just one, and the data those data from the collection populated each page. Now, 
with this page, just like any other static page, we need to test responsiveness, fluidity. So in our tablet breakpoint, let's select our container and take a look. Let's adjust everything to be vertical, whereas horizontal worked in desktop, vertical works a little better here. Let's remove the margin. Let's remove the top padding so that we can adapt this for tablet view. And on our section, we'll do the same thing, holding Alt or Option to adjust both sides at once. Let's test fluidity here. That looks pretty good. In our project summary, we have that 42 pixels of margin on the left. We can set that to zero, and we're looking great. Let's continue. Our width was set to 500. Let's do it 100%, really take advantage of the tablet view. And after looking through, the tablet view looks pretty good. Let's go to mobile landscape and mobile portrait to eyeball what's going on in those. Let's go back to mobile landscape and make some changes. We'll start with the section title, which in both cases looks fine for Prism, but if we go and check out Chad's ripped zone, we can see that the text could benefit from an adjustment. So let's make an adjustment to the text. We can adjust font size, maybe 40 pixels or even 30 pixels. We might want to go even lower in mobile portrait. Let's select that 30 pixels and make it 25 pixels, which if we test that fluidity, if we test that responsiveness, it looks okay. Finally, let's adjust line height. That looks good too. Switching between the breakpoints all the way back up to desktop, let's select Prism from the dropdown. Check that again. We're looking good, but there is a bit of a hierarchy issue in terms of fonts. This is an H2. This is an H1. Now, if we want to correct that size difference, we can simply drag in a heading. This is going to be a temporary heading. And the reason we're using a temporary heading is so we can click H2, go into the selector field, and of course, select the tag all H2 headings. Of course, from here, we can make adjustments to the font size to get that just right. And we can make adjustments to the line height. And once we're done, we can move on. Now, the spacing on and around the full project image can be adjusted as well. Let's hold down Option and drag both sides. 25 pixels is pretty good there. And that's about it. We can, of course, grab the handle on the side to adjust and test fluidity. But that's using a collection page to drive your custom design, using the data pulled from the CMS. As we keep moving forward in this course, we'll add our clients, we'll add a contact section, and we'll build out a persistent navigation menu.